All right, I have wanted to make this video for a very long time. Hi guys, welcome back to the studio and to another magic tutorial. Yes, another one. I'm on a roll with these tutorials, loving it at the moment. Um, so uh, today I'm going to be teaching you one of the most powerful principles in card magic. And I know that sounds like an exaggeration, sounds like something magicians say all the time, but I genuinely believe that this is a deadly weapon in a magician's repertoire. You might remember that on the channel a while ago, I made a signature duplication tutorial. And since that video, I've been working on that principle so much that I've come up with a ton of things that I absolutely love using and things that I swear by. So in this video, I'm going to go in depth on everything I know about the signature duplication principle. I'm going to teach you a bunch of tricks, all of the subtleties, all of the methods. This is a big tutorial, so strap yourselves in. And to all of the people that said that my 10 minute hole punch video was too long, this one's not for you. So uh, grab yourself a deck of cards. I'm going to be using the dystopian deck. These are available uh, via the link in the description. And a couple of other items as well. You're going to want a flip notebook, something to write in, and a regular book with words in. A dictionary would work perfectly. These items will make sense in a minute, so don't be off-put. That'll all come together and you'll see why I'm going to be using those. So, without further ado, let's dive into this monster tutorial of how to duplicate any spectator's signature. All right, so I want to start this video by talking about that original method. Just very, very briefly, I'm not going to go into anywhere near as much detail as I did in that original video, but essentially this is the principle. On top of the deck, we have these three cards. We have two Three of Hearts duplicates, and in the middle, we have our pre-signed card. This is going to be the justification of what I'm writing while I'm actually duplicating their signature. So that goes in the middle. We force the Three of Hearts. I'll skip the force, but imagine we force their Three of Hearts. They now sign the Three of Hearts, and they're signing this card. And while they are, I uncap my Sharpie. I take a double. I turn it over to myself, and now I'm looking at the Three of Hearts, and I just copy what I see. I copy what I see on their card. And uh, I, as I've got better at this, I've been able to do asymmetrical cards. So the Three of Hearts is asymmetrical. It is not the same way round. But to begin with, I always used to use either a two or an ace of diamonds or something, something that's, you know, symmetrical. So I'm now duplicating this signature. And the reason I do a double is so that the pre-signed card is right behind it. So that once I've written this thing over here, I can then show what I was writing, which was the pre-signed card. All the while, I have a duplicate at the ready of their card. So that's the original method. And there's one major thing that I don't like about this method, which is quite obvious, and that is the pre-signed card. It's a little bit difficult to justify. Okay, we're signing two cards. Why can't another spectator sign it? And also, I have to then do a trick that uses two signed cards, and that is not something I always want to do, and it's something that is a bit of a drawback for a lot of people. So I understand that. So if we want to improve this method and enhance this method, the first thing that has to go is the pre-signed card. We need to get rid of it. We need another way of justifying what we're doing. And so we need to move the duplicate. So in this method, we move the duplicates to a different place. This notebook. On the first page of this notebook, all I'm going to do is place my duplicate, my three of hearts. And that goes in the notebook. I can put the elastic strap over it, which means now that the deck is completely clean. I can have this shuffled. There is no setup here. I can have this deck shuffled. I can even have, I dropped some cards. I can even have the three of hearts completely lost in the deck because at the end of the day, I take the deck back and all I'm going to do is cut the three of hearts straight to the top. So now with the three of hearts on top, I can force their card. And now the justification, instead of me signing another card, I'm going to be writing something down. So Kevin, what are you going to be writing down? That's the next major question. And uh, people always ask me about routines. You know, how do you routine tricks, all that sort of stuff? And a really, really helpful thing to know is that it's quite simply linking tricks together. And in this trick, the method for this trick involves linking it to other tricks, which is where this book comes in. Now, this isn't going to work for everyone. I understand that. I understand that different people have different tastes in structures and methods and routines. But I'm going to tell you what I do, and hopefully you can change it from there. I'll give you some advice uh, on changing it and on other tricks that you can use. But essentially, I'm going to do a book test and while I'm doing the book test, I'm going to have to write some information down. And that's when I consult the notebook. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First of all, I need to go through the force. And the force is quite simple. You can do any force at all. You can do 
a, uh, a classic force, just any force that works that gets the three of hearts forced, that is completely fine. I'll just do a riffle force so they say stop forever and uh, the three of hearts is there. If you know the riffle force, I mean if you don't know the riffle force then this is quite an advanced trick so yeah, please go and learn that first. Uh, so that is the force and while they're signing that card, I let them sign it. At this point, I'm not doing anything. I am letting them sign it, which in a way is another downside of the previous method, that you almost felt like you were on a time limit to duplicate it as they were doing it. It was a very sort of stressful moment, and quite a lot of the time that went wrong for me. I'd say maybe 10 to 20% of the time it went wrong for me, which is quite a big miss rate. Now, yes, you did have the pre-signed card as a great justification, a great out, so that if it did go wrong, it wasn't the end of the world. CG right there. So I've just signed the card with CG. First time round, I say, put your initials on the card. And as soon as they've done that, I then refer to it as their signature. Just sort of makes it feel a little bit more fair. It makes it feel like they could have written anything. So once they have initialed slash signed the card, we are good. We are good to go. We can now do as many tricks as we want with this card and it doesn't matter. And again, your routining will depend on this. I don't want to tell you what to do here. If you have a great routine with a signed card, Go into it at this point. If you have ambitious card, which I'm not a big fan of, but if you have a really good ambitious card, then go into it. I think that's great. And once that trick, whatever it is, is over, you can sort of forget about the card and you can put it to one side. Face up, facing you. So what, the way I've positioned it here is the initials are facing towards me. I am now seeing this card plain as day. So now I am going to consult the notebook and a bit of preparation needs to be done here. All you need is a trick where you, the magician, need to write something. So if it's numbers, if it's other playing cards for some reason, if it's words, whatever it is, so long as you have something to write down, you are good. Because in the action of writing down the information, you're gonna duplicate the signature that you can see on the table. That's the justification, that's what's gonna happen here. But I'm gonna teach you a very, very simple book test, which isn't really a trick, there's no method really to this, it's just a riffle force. Um, but what you're gonna do is pick a page in your book, and I'm just using The Honest Psychic for some shameless self-promotion, of course. So uh, I am going to pick a page that is sort of quite deep into the book, and what I want to do is pick a page with not much text on it. This has got hardly any text, it's just a small little paragraph, which is brilliant. And now I want to pick the longest word here, which is demonstration, in this, uh, in this case, the word demonstration. And so, I keep a little break there while I do this. Demonstration. So I've now written down the longest word from that page on the front page of my notebook. The playing card goes on top, cover goes down, and the elastic can go around it so that we're fully set. This is all a preparation, and your preparation might be different. You might write numbers or whatever it is that you're forcing. In this case, I'm writing down the longest word on this page with not a lot of text. I now keep a little thumb break or a finger break at the back, and I turn the main sort of front of the book, these pages here, and that's what's going to be riffling. Just like so, I'm just going to riffle down and say, stop whenever you want. And wherever they say stop, I ignore whatever page I've stopped on here, which is a completely different page. I ignore this, I let go, and I open from the back so that it looks like this. Stop whenever, right there, fantastic. And I've now forced the page with the, the word on. Now I know that it's this side, so I simply say, just think of any word on this page. In fact, make it difficult, go for the longest word. And you see what I did there? I started off by saying, think of any word on this page. So that's what people have heard. That's what people have heard. Think of any word. It feels like such a free choice. But then I've said, actually, go one step harder. Make the trick harder for me, even though I'm actually directing them towards one specific word at this point. Make it harder for me. Go for the longest word on the page. I love doing little subtleties like that, where you start with a big choice, and then it almost becomes a smaller choice, but in their head, even harder for you. So now they're going to start looking at this page over here. And as they're doing that, you need to look in their eyes and make sure that they really are looking at this page. Because if they start scanning over here, then that's a no-no zone, okay? If they go here, the trick is gonna go wrong. So just redirect them back to this page. And remember, I'm doing this here. I'm not doing this. I'm not saying think of a word and I'm pointing at the text. I want to point at the whole page. Because the last thing you want to do is catch yourself out subtly here by giving away the fact that you already know there's a little bit of text here. You want to pretend that you've never seen this page, that you don't know what page we're on, and so you're just going to gesture to the whole thing, even though there's only a bit of text up here. If you do this, 
you're giving away the fact that you know there's only text up there. Be careful of that. Take a moment, look at the page, and get the longest word on this whole page. And again, on this whole page, just widens the parameters a little bit to everyone else who can't see the page. If you're performing this on stage, everything's rhyming at this point. Page, stage, <laughs> there's some sage over there, I don't know what's going on. But as soon as they've got that word, you close the book and you say, great. You have that word in your head. So now they're thinking of the word and you're going to uncap your Sharpie and grab the notebook. And I undo the elastic, make sure the card doesn't fall out, because if it does, that's game over. So just open it gently to begin with horizontal, then put your thumb down on this corner and then hold the notebook like so. And at this point, every ounce of your body should be calm and, and not stressed about the fact that you've got a playing card here. Because if you act suspicious, if you start looking over both shoulders and making sure that no one sees what you've not written anything you know that's gonna cause alarm obviously I'm exaggerating but don't even do this I think even that is a little bit too close you know what, what's going on so I want to hold the notebook out here just where's natural and I'm gonna be talking to them I'm gonna be looking at the spectator and I'm gonna be saying think of the first letter for me and what I'm doing is lining up in my vision the signed card on the table and the notebook perfectly next to each other in my vision and to you, obviously it doesn't look like that, it just looks like I'm holding the notebook as I was before, just in a slightly different position. And I'm just looking straight past the notebook at this point. I'm not looking at the notebook, I'm looking at the signed card, and yet it looks like I'm just looking at what I'm about to write, which is fantastic, because their card is right on the table and I have got so much time at this point. Remember, it's quite a long word, demonstration. And if you wanna go letter by letter reading their mind and uh, writing stuff down, then go for it. So, let's do it. Think of the first letter. At this point, I have time to check whether the card is oriented correctly, which is why it's okay to use a three in this trick, because I have enough time. And uh, if it's not, then uh, a bit of sleight of hand can rotate the card like so. Now, as soon as I've done the signature, I'm done. The work is done at this point. Obviously, I still need to load the card, but I've written the signature, everything is duplicated. My lining up, uh, you know, visually has paid off fantastically. I've got the orientation correct, I've got the signature correct, and I have so much time at this point because we're in the middle of another trick. We're in the middle of a book test, which is why I think book test is so good because that long word idea gives you so much time. So now I can recap the, uh, the Sharpie and I can put it down and I can say, okay, I'm pretty happy about the word that I have, but I don't want you to see just yet. And I close the book and as soon as I do that, the card is no longer here. I've copped it away in that action. Showing you from this side, I have placed the Sharpie down. I still have my thumb in the bottom left corner of the card. And as I go to close the notebook, I'm going to put my hand underneath and I'm going to let go with my thumb at the bottom, but now I'm holding it at the top right corner. And I tip the notebook. And as I do, that card goes into cop. So it's a really sort of interesting move. It goes from here, it tips, and as it tips, I'll sort of show you from this angle, it goes into cop, and it's, I mean, it's really, really simple. You just pinch here, it goes into cop, the notebook closes. And as soon as it is in a gambler's cop right here, this drops to my side, and the notebook goes down, or it goes into their hands, or whatever, so that it locks that uh, prediction in. So now I've made a prediction. I think the worst thing you can do at this point is rush on to the next trick. So you tear away this page, you say, demonstration, great, okay, now onto the card trick. It's just like, whoa, hold on, calm down, you know, well, why are we going back to the card trick? You need to just take a moment. You've done all the work here. You've duplicated the signature. It was in Gambler's Cop. Maybe you load it into your pocket, whatever. Let's imagine that I have just loaded it into my pocket while this reveal is happening, and we now have the duplication in my pocket. I say, brilliant. We have demonstration, and you can keep this page as a souvenir. And uh, you also have another souvenir, of course, this signed card. But before you go home, I want to try one more thing with this signed card. I think that's fair enough. It brings the, the routine nicely together, and it's sort of one more surprise. They thought it was over. One more quick trick. Sure, why not? I'm having a good time. And so uh, you go into the next trick, and here you can do the impossible. I mean, seriously, you can push this card in. That's your card. Watch and then reach straight into your pocket with empty hands and pull it out again. It's like, I've just seen the card, now it's there. It's fantastic. But the one thing you want to avoid, again, is making these tricks too impossible. Because if you make the trick too impossible, then the only explanation they'll be left with is that you must have somehow duplicated their signature. And that is what you've done. This is a ridiculous explanation. So you don't want to make the trick so impossible that the only explanation is the actual one. That's a real risk in magic. And that is 
a card to pocket effect and what a finale, I think, even for magicians, what a finale this would be. How has a card teleported from there to there? You have shown two skills, mentalism and card magic teleportation, you have shown two incredible skills. If you get to the level to duplicate a signature and write down something without a force, so if you genuinely want to do the duplication here and then also write something for real here, then go for it. <laughs> like, honestly, I think that is uh, that is really, really good. Um, so I'm going to teach you a couple of little subtleties that are sort of bonus extras, and it uses a red sharpie. So let's imagine we're just doing the same trick as before, writing the word demonstration. But this time, I'm going to write it in red. And now, I'm not going to use the red sharpie. I'm going to put the red cap on the black sharpie. Quite simply, red cap on a black sharpie. Your mind fills in the rest of the information and you see a red sharpie. So now I can write the word demonstration in red and then still have the duplication in black because this is a black pen. Now I don't need to point it out. I don't need to say anything weird like, I'm going to write this in red. People will be like, all right, good for you. Why do I need to know that? You know, don't mention it. Just, it's a visual. It's just a little visual cue. It's a nice little subtlety. Not something that personally I use or think is very necessary, but it's, uh, it's something that you could use. It's an option that's right there. So now the next thing I'm going to teach you is a variation on card to pocket. It's just a sort of extra advancement. Obviously you can do something like card to wallet if you have a special wallet, uh, but this doesn't require anything special. The only thing it does need is uh, a phone case. You're going to want one of these sort of wrap around phone cases that clips onto the back of the phone and sort of presses in place like so. Uh, some old phones, my old Samsung phone used to have one of those removable backs and sometimes what I do is remove the battery, you know, take off the back, remove the battery and, uh, and do a similar sort of thing but have the card appear inside the phone which was really really good. You're going to want to unclip the phone case like so on one end. So here the, the phone case is fully on but at this end the phone case is, uh, is hanging off the edge and that goes into your back pocket like so with the open end at the top and this is just a very very simple trick. You come to the side and you simply push that into the gap like so and with one thumb pretty much, I can seal that phone case up and I have a signed card in the back of uh, my phone case. It's not the cleanest thing in the world just because of the way these cases work, but when you're behind your back and especially when there's another reveal going on like there is here, uh, you can absolutely get away with it. So it's something that uh, I think is really, really good. It's just, you know, an extra little reveal. They can take the phone, they can be like, how on earth did it get in there? It just feels like a, a miniaturized card through window sort of effect where they can see their card and the signature like so. And uh, all you do is you just pop it out. You know, you can struggle with this, make it seem like it's harder than it is. And uh, you have a brilliant effect right there. So that is card to phone case, a little extra addition, a little extra trick. And anything like this, any idea that you have, anywhere you can load this card, I think is brilliant and, and you should go for it. So that is everything for this video. This has been duplicating a signature, a tutorial I've wanted to do for a very long time and something that I think a lot of people will, will enjoy. And again, this trick is entirely customizable. No tutorial of mine where I've said something should be done a certain way is ever set in stone. I want that to be really, really clear. If you wanna change something, absolutely go for it. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any future tutorials. I'll also link some of my old tutorials in a minute so that you can check those out. And if you really enjoyed this and you want to learn some more magic from myself, then I have a membership over on Patreon. There's a link down in the description, patreon.com slash cavernbooth. From just $5 a month, you can get access to more than 70 tutorials, videos, vlogs, lectures, magic books, loads of stuff is on there. In fact, I say more than 70, but I think it might be more than 100 at this point. I've honestly lost count, so uh, I'm not entirely sure. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything. And I will see you very soon for another video. Take care and stay safe.